In this video, I talk about the Fine Brothers React controversy, I talk about the Sony A6300, and then I talk about shooting 4K on the 1DX Mark II from Canon and the Nikon D5. Let's get into it. Hey there, Caleb Logic of DIY Video Guy, and I'm in a new space. Built these shelves. A lot of these old cameras are actually from my dad, who used to be a photographer, and we're going to do some news. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while on the channel, where new cameras get announced and new random YouTube controversy over people trying to trademark words like react happen and I want to actually get in front of the camera and record things quickly and so what I've decided to do at least for the time being is to set up a dedicated room with my video stuff sitting there and just be ready to to film a little bit quicker videos and put them out uh, just just for YouTube nothing nothing crazy in the production value wise but because I actually get a lot of my news uh, from, from YouTube, from the people that I subscribe to. I'm talking about Vox, or uh, I get stuff from like Wired and Verge for tech news. Um, things like, now I'm blanking. Other, other kinds of news. Uh, uh, Vice. Vice is the one I was thinking of. Other kinds of news to actually stay in the loop on the world, tech, camera stuff, etc. So if you are really into cameras and video and making videos for the web and for YouTube and stuff, I wanted to have a little bit more of a free-flowing kind of news segment, uh, at least in this video, and we'll see how, how it goes and if I keep doing stuff like this. But in this video, we're going to talk about three main things. The whole Fine Brothers React controversy, uh, which I recorded a podcast episode where I talked about it, but just wanted to chime in on that a little bit here. Also going to talk about how some of the pro level, like the entry level pro DSLRs, like the Nikon D5 and the Canon 1DX Mark II are now shooting 4K video, which I find to be interesting in that five to $6,000 price range. And I see that then trickling down into the the 5D series, the, the 70 and 80D series, who knows? Other Canon and Nikon entry-level DSLRs will probably start shooting in 4K. It's my prediction, we'll talk about that a little bit. And then also some some news about Sony and some of the cameras and lenses that they're coming out with. For shooting in 4K correction, we'll talk about that a little bit. Siri just thought I wanted to talk about 4K. We're also gonna talk about Sony a little bit with their new A6300 and some of the lenses that are coming out with that as well. And like I've said before, gear is an important piece of making videos. It's not everything, but uh, it tends to be what news and other types of uh, current videos that are being made, uh, people want to know about. They wanna know, okay, if I'm gonna buy a camera, what's gonna come out soon and what should I do? So first I'm gonna to touch briefly, very, very briefly on the Fine Brothers React controversy and then we'll move on into those cameras. If you're on YouTube a lot and you subscribe to a lot of YouTubers, you've probably heard about this whole Fine Brothers uh, controversy where they trademarked reacting videos and then wanted other people to make a bunch of react videos that they were going to call part of their React World Network and everything. And uh, I had the pleasure of hanging out with some YouTubers this past weekend. And it was interesting to hear people that have been YouTubing for a while give their opinion about uh, what they thought the Fine Brothers were even thinking doing this and the whole controversy behind how they've had other channels like take their videos down and how they've been aggressive towards people like Ellen and things like that. And uh, it was just interesting for me to hear other YouTubers talk about how they feel like they've you know, stood on the shoulders of giants and they weren't the first ones to to do the kinds of videos that they do on YouTube, let alone ever. And so to take a style of video like the Fine Brothers had, granted they made it very, very popular with their different series of kids react and YouTubers react and elders react and everything, to take something that they didn't necessarily create and then to say that they could trademark it and then, you know, have people partner with them and, and send them money. And uh, we, what we talked about was this video that 
CGP Grey had made on his channel, his actually his second channel, so CGP Grey 2, is a parody video about how he was going to trademark stick figures and then you could make stick figure videos and I just I like I draw stick figures because I don't have a lot of artistic talent and I figured other people without a lot of artistic talent can also draw stick figures and like I want to get in on that now so like I own stick figures so yeah it's gonna be great I'm gonna help you make YouTube videos with by uh where you I help you um and Listen, like, you're just going to pay me money if you use stick figures, okay? Like, that's the way this is going to work. He, he would get money from you, and it would be a, a one-way kind of interaction where you make stick figure videos, and he would get the money, and uh, I'm not really doing this video justice or anything, but the fact that YouTube is a very, very small community, actually, for how big the numbers are, subscribers and views and all that stuff, the... You know, there's probably a thousand to two thousand channels with a million subscribers, and if you know a, a group of them don't like something that another YouTuber is doing, based on maybe copying or stealing or trademarking and doing crazy things with content ID to block what other people are making, you know, a lot of YouTubers came to combat the fine brothers and their decision and stuff like that and i think there were definitely copycat people of okay i'm gonna make a youtube video about the fine brothers because it's popular right now and i want to get a lot of views and new subscribers and stuff but a lot of people were not happy with with how that went down and so i talked about this on my podcast as well episode 59 of the diy video guy podcast and i would just recommend that if you're ever going to make a big decision with your business involving very legal ease things like trademarks and uh, content ID on YouTube to get some peer opinions before making an announcement video and even get peer opinions on that specific announcement video so you sound like actual human beings. Next, I want to talk briefly about the Sony A6300, the 6300. It's a new upgrade to their mirrorless camera and it shoots 4K for $1,000, and you get interchangeable lenses with the Sony mount on there. And uh, I just am continually surprised by Sony and what they're able to put out, and specifically this push to 4K, and I think it's really making other companies out there, like Canon and Nikon, get 4K into their prosumer and entry-level DSLRs and other cameras. Now, I know Sony didn't start 4k or anything but a lot of their recent cameras and all the way up through the a7 series into the fs5 and 7 are putting a lot of pressure on canon owners like myself because of the 4k and the image quality and being able to just use a metabones adapter to switch over to those cameras it's very very tempting i have friends that uh, are trying to bring me over to the sony side but i really do like my c100 mark ii Sticking with it for now, but I'm getting off track. The A6300 is a pretty cool looking camera. It's very, very small. And then they announced a new series of these G lenses. So let's take a little bit closer look at the 6300 here. You can see $1,000 in B&H there, mirrorless body. Look at that. So it doesn't have a screen that flips all the way back like the RX. 100 mark 4 but you know it has a little bit of an articulating screen and this is a pretty strong manufacturing for a mirrorless camera and the a6000 was a very very popular camera and then they came out with a bunch of g series lenses these lenses are a little bit more expensive than your introductory lenses but sony's trying to compete with Zeiss glass and with these G series lenses to be super, super fast autofocus, low aperture, and compete with, you know, Canon and Nikon lenses that have been around for a long time in the, in the still world. So it's tough still to say that you should go Canon right now with a lot of the things that Sony's doing camera and lens wise. Um, so be on the market for more information about 
like 6300 as it becomes available, as well as I wanna get my hands on some Sony cameras and test them out a little bit so I can give you guys my opinion after using them and not just hearsay and news and things like that. And for this last group, let's bring in a little bit here. So in the last couple months, there's also been a couple announcements from Canon and Nikon for their higher level uh, professional type grade cameras. The, the Canon uh, 1DX Mark II has been announced as well as the Nikon D5. And specifically what's interesting to me about those is they both have 4K video and they're around you know five, 6,000 US dollars. And uh, they, look, they look decent. I mean, they're not gonna be 12-bit, 444, anything crazy quality-wise in video, but right now we use 5D Mark III's from Canon for our still needs with my wife's wedding and portrait photography business. And so, you know, maybe upgrading to 1DX Mark II's to do that type of work, as well as it gives me the option to start shooting 4K in the videos that I wanna do. So there's, there's just a lot of options between different camera manufacturers and the 4K footage is looking pretty good with a lot of these cameras. I know they take them to ideal environments and they, they grade them and all that stuff to make them look really good, but these, uh, these cameras are starting to look really good, makes me wanna keep upgrading and it makes me just want to get my hands on and test them for you guys to give you a little bit of a look at what it's like to actually use these cameras versus you know spec sheets and things like that. So what do these pro level cameras getting 4K really mean for the rest of us that maybe aren't shooting with five six thousand dollar cameras and you know they're getting the entry level ones that are sub a hundred thousand dollars? It means to me that 4K is coming to these DSLR cameras. It's already prevalent on mirrorless cameras from Panasonic, uh, Sony, etc. But I do think that Canon and Nikon can't go another year or two without putting 4K video in their cameras. So you'll see that, I would guess, later this year in 2016. And that's kind of it for news right now. Sony A6300, excited to get my hands on that and try it out. Little tiny 4K mirrorless camera, as well as if you're gonna do some sports photography and you need a lot of frame rate bursting for photos, but you also wanna shoot video, uh, the, the Nikon D5 or the 1DX Mark II from Canon are gonna be some pretty solid options for doing both photo and video. So I'm excited to go get my hands on some of those. I don't think I'm gonna to go to WPPI this year in Vegas, but I will be at NAB in April in Vegas to check out some of these cameras and kind of see uh, what it's like to use them. So that wraps up this news episode right now. You know, don't try to trademark words like react. It's to what were they thinking? I, what were they thinking? I don't know. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thumbs up below and comment if you want to see more current event type style videos as opposed to the bigger drawn out gear reviews and tutorials and unboxings or how to operate your camera and do video editing and things like that. If you want more of this, okay, what's going on now so that you don't accidentally buy the wrong piece of equipment right when something else is about to come out, let me know by clicking thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and commenting on this video. Remember, if you're gonna do it, might as well do it on video and I've been Caleb Wojcik of DIY Video Guy. Cheers.